Hello, hello, this is Sharp Eyes coming at you live. And uh, helping me cast is my good buddy, Crucifix. Hello, hello, hello. All right, looks like we have two players facing off in a death match. First player will be Sup, son. Sup, the, son? The orange Zerg player spawning in the top left-hand corner. And Crucifix, will you introduce the other player? Well, everyone knows John Boy in the uh, bottom right-hand corner playing Protoss. Protoss <sighs> Looks like we're going to have an exciting PVZ today on uh, Bell Steer Vizige. Should be pretty fun. One of the premier ladder maps of this year's GSL season. Premier, premier, premier. Um, picked by now. One thing about this map is the uh, choke for the natural is is quite wide. It's it's really hard um, as a Terran player for me to uh, to wall this off. So you can't really go for a uh, CC first, um, and it's hard to uh, it's hard to protect when you're trying to do like a one barracks fast expand. But since this is a Protoss player and he's a uh, and he already set out a pylon out there. He might even be, he might think about going for a forge fast expand, walling it off with some uh, with some buildings. Yeah, the choke is pretty wide, but uh, it seems like the Protoss player has um, tactically put down that pylon. So that should <laughs> that'll do the trick. <laughs> so yeah, the forge the forge it was put down. So it's looking like we are looking for a forge fast expand from uh, from John Boy, and then uh, sup sup. Put down his uh, his uh, spawning pool. What a uh, what supply was he at when he put that spawning pool down? You know what? I actually don't know, but um, it actually seems like he is spawning oh. six zerglings. So this I is think very this indicative been, of a ten pool. This might have been a. I mean, it is a. It is a. Yeah, it's looking like uh, several zerglings coming across the field for a little bit of early pressure. What some people could call this a cheese. Other people. Could call it a uh, just strategic play, and this one about with this uh, wide choke right here. This map is is pretty good for Zerg cheese because if you can get those Zerglings in there before they can uh, block it off, then uh, then there's nothing they can do. But he does end up. I think he did a full. I think he did a full wall. He he did do a full seal. Yeah, it he looks did like do those links will not be able to get inside. That was very smart by the Protoss player, knowing about that wide choke and doing a full seal on the wall and two photon cannons, which um, two photon cannons you don't usually see with this kind of a wall. You usually only see one, but he uh, he went for the extra protection, and he's not going to be breached anytime soon. Um, the uh, the uh, Zerg player could try a bailing bus sometime in the future. No time anytime soon, because he doesn't even have gas yet, but... Um, as for right now, there's no uh, Zerg player is definitely not going to be getting into this, uh, getting into this base, and the Protoss player isn't going to be getting out. So, looks like a very interesting play by the Protoss player as he actually cancels that second cannon. He did. That's strange. I think he put the second cannon there um, to prevent maybe an early ling rush, but when he realized his first cannon was good enough, he. Uh, he went ahead and just canceled it and said, why don't, why don't I just put my Cybernetics core here instead? Learning on the fly. Very nice. And um, he did put down his expansion before the Zerg player, actually, so not something you see too often. Correct. Uh, it does look like um, a very interesting uh, tactical decision by the Zerg player. Um, he is going to try to take his cannon down inside. I think he will take the cannon down. He will down. take down that cannon. He, did, he does have like three Zerglings left attacking the pylon. I think... I don't know about his decisions to attack the pylon, but I guess it does make a little bit. Of, it does make sense because if he can get this pylon down, he can uh, shut down Protoss's only warp gate. So um, it is a, a very good decision by the Zerg player to attack this pylon. It looks but like it does the pylon look like will be going the down. Zerg this is a very right at the last second to uh, to help fight these Zerglings. If if he had gotten that pylon just a fraction of a second beforehand. Um, that would have been even worse, but it's really, I mean, honestly, it's only two links. I'm, I'm actually surprised that, uh, that, um, the Protoss doesn't just attack with, with probes, but, um, I guess he's, I, mean, I guess, like, by the same token, it's only two, it's only two Zerglings, so it's even going to take a little while to take down a probe, except for, uh, it seems like they made short work of that one. Looking at the, uh... Workers killed count. We do see that the Lings have killed 
three probes, which is uh, quite a lot. As the, the as the uh, the uh, forge fast expand, you really want those probes early in. Because uh, you spent so much money. Oh, looks like he did start the wall once again, and the Zerg player is really uh, hitting hard with this early pressure with these Zerglings. Um, the cannons are doing an okay job, but the Zealot is by himself, and and uh, the Protoss player uh, doesn't even have anything else. Uh, uh, he doesn't even have any other army units being made right now. Um, focusing mostly on the photon cannons and he's uh, and probe production, but. He has 300 minerals, so, I mean, he, he can afford to make probes and army units right now. And what's interesting is he's he, he had three queued up at his natural and zero queued up at his main, and he's still not making any probes from his main. So he really needs to uh, make probes from both of these. Uh, I mean, that's almost, that's the whole point of a Forge Fast Expand. Get two Nexus down early, make two probes at once instead of uh, instead of waiting. I mean, he yeah, does have a lot of focus on cannons now, so he should prevent any further uh, lean, uh, lean harass. Yeah, it seems he has been neglecting his main Nexus for one reason or another, but uh, looks like uh, at least one probe is still being made. So and now he's not... making them from his main he has three queued plus a mothership core and zero from his his natural, so it seems like he has a hard time making uh, probes from both. But going back to the Zerg play, it looks like the Zerg has just he's almost finished his third. Um, does, only has one uh, drone on. Oh, now he has five on his natural, and I'm and uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be droning up on his uh, on his third. What do you think? Do you think that the fact that he applied early pressure like that gives him the um, Gives him uh, the comfort he needs to just drone up right now. I honestly think that um, that early pressure was pretty decent, but um, the lack of a queen here really um, seems detrimental to the Zerg's um, economy at this point. Yeah, he's had a spawning pool since uh, 10 supply. He's at 40 now, and he only has uh, he he does have two queens. And he's uh, going to get his third now, but he didn't have it for a long time, is that correct? Uh, uh, it actually looks like that queen was wandering around, not uh, uh, hitting those energetic timings. Oh, I see. Yep. He did put down a roach for him, so it looks like we're going to have a little roach play going on. Um, he is making, if you look at the production tab, um, he is uh, making four overlords. Make sure he doesn't want to get supply blocked. And I think he was supply blocked for a second there. And uh, now he's continuing to make a, a, a drone and getting his upgrades started. Looks and eight like, roaches. Looks like roaches will be getting pumped out. Will we see a good timing attack done here by the Zerg? Well, I mean, honestly, uh, with those eight roaches and the uh, and the six Zerglings he has on the field, he still has a bigger army than the Protoss player. Well, he, um, but it's getting uh, the, that difference is getting smaller and smaller um, as time goes on. The Protoss player now does have uh, five Zealots, which would. Uh, Anybody knows that five zelts will take out six lings any day, but those roaches, uh, those zelts aren't as good against those roaches, and he only has, um, and they're they're uh, definitely good against stalkers. So we'll see what happens there. Going back to the zerg player, we see that he does have his second expansion up. Um, it actually looks like he is not producing many units, opting for five spine crawlers. It's actually. Kind of curious, he got three spore crawlers at his main instead of spine crawlers, so he really doesn't want any air harass, but that's not going to help him too much against uh, any early ground aggression, and Protoss isn't really known. I mean, I guess he's worried about Oracle play maybe, but um, I would say that at least one spine crawler would have been a good addition to that. Looks like the Roaches will be dispatching of those Zealots, um, and... Doesn't look like much action going on by either player. It looks like they're just uh, they're kind of uh, sitting back, um, wait, uh, drone, uh, droning up and getting their economy going. The Zerg player has been on three bases for quite a while. It looks like the Protoss player has now fully saturated both his main and his natural. We'll see if he'll take a, a third anytime soon. Um, the Protoss player is currently, uh, he is making his first Colossi, so he is going Colossus um, and getting both... Uh, uh, armor level one and extended thermal lance for his colossi. So, investing heavily into those colossus. Hopefully, they work out for him. Still making probes, which is good, and uh, another robotics facility. 
there is a saying somewhere out there where uh, a colossi without a thermal lens is a useless colossi, and I think it is very mm. true, um, especially in the uh, Protoss versus Zerg matchup, as th those Hydralisks and Roaches actually have so much range that without um, the extended thermal lances, colossi are useless without that range upgrade. Right. I mean, if uh, you have the if you have the Protoss attacking you at the uh, maximum range of the Roaches and the Hydras. And the Colossi would literally be doing nothing unless they were right out front, which is where you would never want your Colossi anyway. So, yeah, you're right. The extended thermal lines is, is extremely important upgrade. Looks like uh, we do have we do have an immortal. Um, we have an immortal and plus one attack uh, up for the Protoss player. Um, so he still is just um, getting his army ready to go. I would say that he probably could afford a little bit more production right now. Um, or at least could afford to be uh, making more units because he does have three warp gates here that are not um, that are not warping in anything, and he has uh, almost 1,700 minerals. So he uh, he really needs to try and uh, focus on making more army units um, while he still has the chance before these roaches come and attack him, which they are right now. Roaches are moving in. I wonder which base they're going. They're going they to gonna try go to hit the, the natural. Now, there are a lot of photon cannons there, but uh, it, there is a really good arc, and it looks like the uh, Colossi will drive the Zerg player away. He knows that he can't get through the photon cannons and the Colossi at the, uh, at the same time. So he's going to go ahead and move back to his base, group up, and maybe try again in the future. Uh, looks like the Protest player might just move out, which isn't a bad idea. He does have three Colossi now. Uh, and a, uh, but I don't know if he has. Do you think he has? Uh, do you think he has quite enough meat for uh, to to protect his colossi? Or uh, it, it looks like he has an okay ground force, but it doesn't look like the colossi to uh, stalker ratio is quite high enough. Um, it actually looks like the uh, Protoss player needs a bit more zealots, or at least um, some more gateway yeah. units to tank. And again, he has uh, the minerals and the gateways to do it. He just seems to choose. He just seems uh, like he doesn't. He doesn't want to right now. Uh, he, there is a battle going on here, though. Roaches does look like the roaches were on the move command. There uh, are going to be attacking those stalkers. Looks like the muters are going to focus down all these colossi. They will all fall. Uh, running is futile, and he should have just stayed there and tried to kill as many roaches as possible. Um, it's Looks looking like Mutas like will be taking down the Colossi. Stalkers trying to chase them down, but uh, I'm surprised the Mutas didn't attack these uh, these uh, Stalkers warping in here. Probably could have killed those before they even entered the battlefield. But it looks like the Mutas are headed straight for the third base, and there is absolutely nothing over here that is going to take them down. Uh, meanwhile, the Protoss is doing a full retreat back to his natural, and he's going to hide behind. The oh no, he is going to go respond to that uh, Nexus Rats, but he's not going to get there in time. Nexus will go down. Looks like he's just going to stand right at the top of his ramp in case the Mutas try to uh, come into his natural expansion. It, it actually looks like the uh, double Robo Bay build here will be limiting the Protoss into a anti-ground build, which the Zerg is taking full advantage of. It is. Um, Crucifix, do you think the Protoss should um, go air at this point? Um, I think he at least needs... He, I think definitely he need, at least needs some answer to the Mutas. I mean... Uh, stalkers aren't no st stalkers would do the trick, but it doesn't look like and he's doesn't look like he's working in quite enough, and he still doesn't have. Oh well, before I uh, tell you that, it looks like we have um, some action over in the top right hand corner. The stalkers are trying to take out both the mutas and the roaches. The, Will this uh, go down? Honestly, it might because the the Protoss upgrades are at one one, and the um, the Zerg still only has uh, zero. Uh, zero one. So, oh, it doesn't look like the Protoss. Oh, but the reinforcements are here for both the Zerg and the Protoss. It's looking. Oh, this is going to be such a close battle. Uh, it looks like the Protoss does run away. I honestly don't know if he had. Okay, no. I think he did make the right decision there. The Zerg had just a little too much, especially with all these reinforcements coming. Look at all these roaches marching across the field. And does the Protoss have anything back at this base to uh, to defend? It doesn't look like he does. And honestly, again, with uh, he has so many minerals, uh, so many warp gates, but I think uh, all of the uh, the micro has uh, made him uh, has made him um, drop down a little bit on his macro and didn't get as many stalkers as he could have while he was fighting that battle. 
Oh, looks like the Zerg player will be taking out the second expansion. Of he's getting a good player. position here with all of his stalkers. If he's going to even have a chance, it's looking like is he? Re is let's see if uh, everybody is still at one one. And uh, I don't even think. Oh, he's not. He he isn't researching. Um, he isn't researching. He doesn't even have a Twilight Council, so he can't get those second tier upgrades. It looks like we are going to stay with. Um, with Colossi and Gateway units for the remainder of this battle. And both players seem to be at a little stalemate. Neither one of them want to make a move. The Zerg player probably uh, made a little bit of a mistake there. Probably could have pushed in and maybe even ended the game. But um, but it was... The, the Protoss player did have uh, some stalkers. It would have been would have been fairly close, and he would have had the support from these Photon Cannons. So maybe the Zerg player just wants to get an overwhelming force before moving in. Um, meanwhile, the Protoss is, uh, is, is massing once again. Absolutely. Looks like the Zerg and, uh, player will be base. trying to move in with some Mutalists. Now, you see the Protoss player did put a hidden base in the uh, left, hand, uh, left hand side here, but the Zerg player just scouted that with a drone, which is really smart from the Zerg player. And meanwhile, the Zerg player is now on six bases. He has now expanded three times uh, concurrently. And so it looks like uh, Zuri is now going to go take out this Nexus. Uh, this should be canceled. Um, it may not be, however. And it and also looks like the Zuri is also moving. He is moving in with some mutilists on the other side of the map. I and wonder what happened over there as um, he actually retreated hmm. the mutilists. Well, the uh, protest player d did look like he moved his stalkers in there a little bit, but the thing is. The Zerg player has just overwhelming control of this map right now. Six bases, none of them mining yet, but um, he is, uh, the, Pro the Protoss player is about to find out about this base right next to his, though, because he's trying to build a Nexus on it. And when his probe gets over there, he's going to find out and most likely go over there to attack it. So this base will almost surely go down um, unless uh, the Zerg player decides that's the time to just send in all his forces. And it might not be a bad idea. Because if the Protoss player gets out of position trying to kill this base, which he is going, taking his whole army to do, the Zerg player could move in to his natural and take out the whole thing. So we'll see if that's the choice he makes. And it's looking like Zerg player is moving. He's not going to move in. He's, he's choosing to stay where he is and, uh, and uh, just make, because he knows that he's on five bases and he knows the, the Protoss is on three, is on two. So uh, I guess he just feels safe enough to just not even to not even move in until he's absolutely positive he's going to win. And if you look at his base, it looks like he's got several swarm hosts. He has he has 15 swarm hosts right now sitting at his main base. So and a Nidus network. So he is uh, definitely looking to do some exciting play here in a few minutes. Looks like. Oh, and Nidus nice worm, worm is going go to go down the front. Looks like those locusts will be making their way into the tunnel. He's definitely just going to pop his locusts. Mutalists right are taking out this. Oh, he did. He popped. Oh, he did. He got the uh, he got the gas, which uh, and and he didn't lose a single mutalist. So that was some really good harass by the Zerg player. The bio the the ball from the uh, protest player isn't too bad right now. Oh, can he catch these Swarmos out of position? It looks like, oh, the majority of them will get buried. Does he lose a couple? And it's, oh, and the Mutalists catch the... The Mutalists catch the... The Colossi out, um, in the back here. It doesn't look like those Tuckers are... Know what to focus. All of the Colossi go down. Um, I think the Mutalists and the Roaches will go down here for the Zerg player. But there's, uh... Does the Zerg... Does the Protoss have... Uh, does he have um, detection right now? Uh, it looks like the nice worm went down, but it looks like no, he doesn't have detection. The Zerg player really needs to bury the swarm host, and nope, does that swarm host will go down. Um, what's interesting though is that the splash damage from the thermal lands is actually killing the swarm host, even though he has no s detection. So honestly, if the Protoss player just keeps his uh, keeps his Colossi right next to these loca locusts. Um, he could kill these swarm hosts without even needing an observer, which he gets now, anyways. But uh, that would have been some smart play from the Protoss player. Looks like the observer will be coming in, cleaning up those swarm hosts. Mm -hmm. Crucifix. And if there was ever a time, sorry, go ahead. What were you gonna ask? Um, Crucifix, do you think these infestors back here will hold off this attack? 
Uh, oh, well, I mean, honestly, I think the, his, his strategy is going to be fun, uh, Fungal and lo Locust. So keep them where they are, make it so that they can't uh, move into his move into his swarm host and kill it with kill him with three un with free units. But honestly, right now it's looking like the Protoss is just moving across the map, uh, taking out those expansions one by one. But still, if you remember, uh, the Zerg is still on four bases. The, Zerg, the Protoss has mined out every single mineral he has. He has eighteen min He has one hundred and thirty minerals left until he's completely mined out. He does. He uh, does have uh, this third base up and running, which is which he's needed for a long time, so it's a good thing he's gotten that. Um, now we just have to decide, see if the uh, Protoss decides to move out or not. Doesn't look like he will. The uh, Zerg player still has an economic advantage, and the, I think the Zerg is just going to mass up again and go for another big Nidus Worm attack, um, is what I would expect to see. Also, the interesting thing is that the Protoss barely got these two assimilators up and running again. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, judging by the mineral to gas ratio, it looks like right. Protoss is gas starved. And by and you know that could be one of the reasons he has such high mineral count right now, because you know you get in this position where the units you want to make cost gas, and you don't have any. And a lot of people, um, and I think what he really needs to be doing right now is warping in. He's at 114 supply versus 148. He needs to be warping in mass zealots right now. There's no reason not to. He has the minerals. He doesn't have the gas to make much of anything else. So he needs to be making, and it looks like he is going to be warping in nine zealots, just as I say that. So I'm glad that he's taking that route. And uh, but um, and he could even add more warp gates um, would be a good idea. Now that he has that third, and I would uh, recommend that he takes a fourth while the Zerg is no longer harassing him, and he's on the back foot after that failed attack, um, I would say that he could take a fourth, which he is. Okay, there's some smart play coming from the Protoss right now. Very smart play indeed. Looks like the Zerg player will be massing Infestor Roach. Oh, and here's this. Here's, here's, this could be the, the big battle. And oh, those Infestors, they're not doing... They finally throw down some Infested Terrans, and they get one good fungal in. That is, that was actually one really good fungal, but he lost, uh, he lost a few of those Infested, he lost a few of those Infested, and maybe use, lose a few more of those Colossi. Yeah, it looks like the oh, the Infested of the, the Zerg really Army good was work, really narrow, and, uh, and allowed the Protoss to just mm -hmm. AoE the shit out of the Zerg Army. <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, it looks like the fourth is gonna go down, which is kind of a big deal because that was his main mining base. Uh, he, he's oversaturated as natural. He's undersaturated as his third, and his fourth was a uh, had. Um, oh wow! Uh, there's a lot of swarm host action going on. Um, ultralist, ultralist play, and um, it looks like those mutas are going to go down. So even uh, even with the ultralists from the Zerg player, couldn't quite. Oh, and that's the GG. He has uh, he has quit the game. So. Good game from both players. I thought at, at, at there was times where I thought e either of the players could have won that, and uh, I thought the Protoss made kind of a heroic comeback there. Um, it actually looks like the Zerg player might have still be, been in the game. I think yes, he that's left what too I, early. I think he quit early. Honestly, I mean, he was still on equal base count. Uh, he could have... Um, the the protest army wasn't that big, it wasn't so big that he couldn't have used at least tried to use the remaining larva he had to get some sort of uh, maybe even mass roach. Like if he had, maybe if he had gone mass roach with all of his remaining larva, he probably could have hold, held that off because um, uh, roaches are very good against stalkers and the 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 colossi without the stalkers are basically just dead colossi. Definitely, definitely, and also. Um... I noticed that the Zerg player did not get corruptors, which which completely shut down Colossi. Right, right. I mean, it's just like uh, if you were a Terran player and you went in, uh, you went in to fight a Protoss with zero Vikings and no no air to air. I mean, there's there's no reason not to get not to get air to air if you know that uh, he's making Colossus because it's um it's it's definitely the hard counter to it. Um, and and honestly, um, he had th that was a thirty minute game. Um, if you don't want to be stuck with those, uh, if you don't want to be stuck with those uh, corruptors after you're done killing his colossi, go broodlords. You know, I mean, that's a really powerful unit. 
Definitely. Um, it it did look like that last engagement was uh, was very bad for the Zerg player as the investors just mm -hmm. didn't have enough room to to work their magic. No, they didn't. Like uh, if if I, I mean those were there were a lot of investors there. I mean they could have they could have put down a fun like a fungal. A fungal infested Terran from uh, from all of those infestors would have been could have killed the whole could have killed the whole Protoss army if they they had had room, but the Protoss player was able to find a position where um, those infestors just couldn't couldn't uh, space out enough to get to do what they wanted to. Yep, yep. All right, and that concludes the cast. Until next time, this is Sharp Eyes, and this is Crucifix signing off. Peace.